live is and we're live. and we're live on Facebook. <laughs> live from Massachusetts. In it's Zoom Wednesday world. afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> My background, as you can see, is not the birth of Venus. It is in no. my mother's bedroom. So um, I am. I have moved. It's been a, a tumultuous couple of weeks. I've moved. I'm down at my parents for the time being until I can put together the money and find my own, very own place to live. Yes. Robin, how are you today? I'm fantastic. I can't find you on live, by the way. It's not, it's not showing up. It doesn't matter. But I'm nothing really fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> That's because live doesn't exist and nothing exists. And it's nothing all, exists. It's all just okay. terrestrial plane is false. <laughs> well, it's not false. <laughs> <laughs> it's maybe shifting a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, okay. So that's a great transition. Robin. <laughs> I like that. Why don't we discuss what just that such a thing? This terrestrial plane is shifting. Well, so the terrestrial plane is so what's happening is there's a lot of planetary shifts and changes and big, 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 big things that are changing, like astrologically and energetically, that are affecting life on earth life as we know it we're 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 ushering in what's been called the new earth the, the great alignment of 5d consciousness any number of things that, that's like it's all the same stuff but what has to happen is all of the 3d stuff has to dissolve go away get, get right so so right now because of where saturn is in the astro astrological wheel it's it's causing um and, and Saturn will be there now for three years. So it's causing the the dissolution really of linear 3D time. <laughs> okay, and first Saturn is where? We we know it's so, so Saturn is in Pisces. Saturn's in Saturn's uh, so, in watery Pisces. <laughs> yeah, right. So 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 um Saturn is the planet of it's called the lord of time and karma like saturn is the planet of like constriction and and having like like as you reap so shall you sow that's saturn's en energy and mm -hmm. it's a big planet it's the biggest planet in the solar system so it's it's affecting it has a huge reach because it's such a big planet and it is really exacting and really taciturn and really like saturn is a is a big deal the energy of pisces is almost the exact opposite of that <laughs> so pisces is dreamy and floaty and watery and emotional and like just sensitive and like there's what light bulb like there's just pisces has no real well pisces isn't based in any reality pisces is dreamy it's the end of the zodiac it's the like it's the it's the omega it really is this like totally dreamy open energy so when you have this dreamy open energy in almost direct contrast with saturn saturn can't actually influence its it's it's it can't exert its influence so so you've got this real like like dissolution of all the things that saturn governs which is time and structure and restrictions and linear 3d ways of being that's all that's all saturn's realm and pisces is just like why can't we all get along <laughs> so so saturn doesn't have it doesn't have its its own it doesn't have its ability anymore which is it's what's what we're going to see is this like dissolution of kind of 3d time so so saturn is kind of like doesn't really have a, a leg to stand on now he's like exactly he's like, boom boom, boom. Now, now he's in water he's like whoa i don't know how to swim exactly <laughs> exactly exactly okay and, all right and like, I'm, I'm and the very very i like the image in my head about this but go ahead yeah that's awesome and that's kind of so that's really like as a humanity that's sort of that's sort of how we also feel is that like so much has shifted in the past few years that we actually feel like we're standing on on, on sand and the sand mm -hmm. keeps shifting and there isn't really a, a solid ground to stand on because things mm -hmm. are all falling away that's kind of just what's meant to happen as we move into this new earth consciousness now, new Earth consciousness sounds great. I hope I know, it sounds woo -woo. We destroy ourselves. Well, right? so here's the deal: there, there's, there's, there's nothing on the there's, there's an abundance of everything that we could ever need on the planet. That's how it works. However, yeah. we're not taking care of 
ourselves we're not taking care of our planet we're not taking care of the Southern. things that yeah so we're creating the lack and scarcity because we're not doing what we need to do in order to access the infinite abundance of the planet now what is it that we need to do to access the infinite abundance of the planet <laughs> well we need to clear our shit out of the way <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> No nope. revolution. I'm done. <laughs> I'm out. Sorry. <laughs> Baron Williamson said the revolution that will ultimately save humanity is the personal one, right? It's, that's it's like we need to we need to understand that we're all part of a collective. And and the faster, the sooner, the easier we do that, the more the easier the transition is gonna be. If we're in deep, deep, deep resistance, then that's gonna be a really painful transition for anybody who's stuck in that resistance, as you maybe could attest personally. I don't know. See, you know, here's the thing that's kind of I don't know about concerning, but more than interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like, so for me, again, we, we discussed this woo-woo thing. I was always considered very, very woo-woo until I found your world and you. And now I'm like the least woo-woo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the most skeptical, which is the weirdest position for me to be in. I'm like, wait, what? How no. am I the reasonable one now? <laughs> uh, uh, and then it's like, wait, no, you are the reasonable ones. But um. I mean, I've always been the most woo-woo person I know. Yes, so also, this is the this is the, the paradigm shift. Woo-woo is right. <laughs> woo <-woo, laughs> all the woo-woo stuff that we thought was like woo-woo, like it's actually true. Yeah. And all the other crap isn't. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Know? So, exactly. So that's the paradigm shift I have uh been been enjoying. Um and that's kind of the paradigm shift that the entire planet is gonna go through. Well, so my thought here then is, um, shoot, potential spam. We'll just ignore them. <laughs> okay. We don't need that. Uh, <laughs> um, so my thought is if I considered myself a bit more enlightened than some others on the planet, like not by no means in, not in this new world that I have found, but back in the day when i thought i was like i know what's going on <laughs> back then like there are people who are not close to having any sort of like i consider myself since i was since i was a child i've always been very conscious mm -hmm. you know what i mean like if if not and, and very aware not if not like able to use that to a certain degree or in whatever varying degree of using that or evolving that may be I was always there mm -hmm. and I have mm -hmm. actually recently become more aware of how unconscious and unaware some people are like just to, to, to depths where I was like, <laughs> what, you know, like, like, it's just, I've come up against certain elements where I just didn't, I didn't even realize this, this level of unawareness was a thing. <laughs> um, so if there are people like that around, who can totally become aware when they are given the uh, opportunity? Like, how are we gonna? Like, I'm not, I've gone, I've gone off on one right now. But like, basically, what, I'm, what I don't know if you know what I'm getting at. Do you know what I'm getting at yet? <laughs> how, how are we gonna reach them? Is that what you're asking me? Yeah, like, how, how are we gonna not get our job. before we destroy ourselves? That's not our job. Okay. 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 That's that. That takes the pressure off right you know how i tell you all the time if it's not is it yours don't pick it up right that's not yours because <laughs> that comes from a place of fear and lack and scarcity comes from fear uh, i'm scared <laughs> yeah okay right great awesome it's gonna be Sit 85 the degrees tomorrow and the next day in april yeah. in boston i'm scared okay. all right i get it i understand that and the planet's been around for how many billion years i have no no, we're not going to destroy the planet. We're just going to destroy the life on it. It's going to get a fever and completely destroy us. That's yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah, and then we move on to the next plane. You know, what's, is it what's yours? To, is it yours to worry about, Jen? Really if you're not. in this plane, you're here. If you're in the next plane, does it matter? No, you know, it's it's been amazing as as I've grown and 
evolved and I hope you can't hear that but um, as I've, I've as I've evolved and become more aware um tapped into some abilities or whatever that I think we all latently have but for some reason all of a sudden I can feel and see them more than other people yeah. um it's it, it's just become very clear it's like oh it's just this is not a this is not a problem <laughs> Right. Death is death isn't a problem anymore. I no, mean, it's just the next transition. It's it just is. The next phase. When, when it comes to it, I'm not going to want to. I'm not going to want to give up this life, and I'm going to keep this life as long as I can. But in the end, we're in transition. It's all energy. I'm energy. Your energy, and whether or not this energy is attached to this animal body or not, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> exactly it's really it's really the suffering that, that I fear and not only for myself but for the people that I love who are younger and so I ask you is that yours no but I want to do something about it <laughs> what can you do nothing what can you do what do you have control over myself <laughs> So and if you only have else. control over yourself, <laughs> what mm -hmm. can you do? Relax. And raise your vibrations. Focus on what oh, you yeah. want, not what you don't want. Cultivate the energy of enough or healing or transition. Cultivate the energy of I'm going to shine my light as bold and bright and fierce as possible. People get to de decide to resonate with it or not. But your job is to be unapologetically fierce in your shining of your light. So that is not only true for me, that's for everybody. everybody. Literally, it's the only thing you can do. It's the only thing we can it's do. It's literally like, the only thing you can do. And it's funny to me because like on, when you ask me straight out, I'm like, we, me, be good. <laughs> <laughs> but like this is, these are conclusions I've come to on my own and other times of, of being. Um, so I'm with you on this. <laughs> I'm with you. But, and, and Jen, right now, you're in this like dark, dark, dark night place expressly so you can learn how to do it in the face of pretty incredible challenge. You know, I, it's funny. I say incredible challenge, but I'm sitting at my parents' house, which is a pretty nice condo in Hanson, Massachusetts <laughs> without, a, without any, like a worry about food or shelter or clothes or I mean, sure, there are certain challenges, this all first world challenges, which I I feel guilty but also again something to put down and raise my vibrations about exactly guilt is useless <laughs> and unproductive yes right yes. guilt is there as a as a as a as a as it's the shadow of your second chakra it's the, it's that's this the guilt of the second chakra is that are you allowed to actually have your needs met and enjoy pleasure that's if you if you aren't then there's guilt associated and that's the second chakra right as opposed to the next one is shame but all right let's stop talking about me <laughs> we always talk about you Jeff. i know it's my it's my favorite subject let's let's, let's right, exactly exactly it's totally fine it is my favorite subject and i hope it's yours too but um we absolutely right um so let's discuss how we can how people out there then if we're all in this like we discussed earlier before we turned on the the button um in this waiting pattern Mm. where uh we're kind of just waiting for the other shoe to drop as you as you said um, well no i think people are think that we're waiting for the other shoe to drop but the reality is we're kind of in this energy of all this the, all the all the stuff that happened in march there was so much energetically there was so much intensity in march and 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 it did feel lighter once because it was such a build up to by Pluto going into Aquarius and the and the heavens cross opening and the equinox and the, then there was a full the, the the new moon at on the equinox in Aries there was a because all these things it was a lot of intensity energetic intensity um and Pluto in Aquarius is the shadow coming up to be healed and revolutionized that's what that means so everybody's shadow is up right now but there's a sense of pause because there's the first several weeks of April were quiet energetically. There's not, I mean, there's some stuff going on, obviously. I mean, you can look at, you can look at the news and there's any number of things going on. <laughs> I've stopped. <laughs> <laughs> it's wise. <laughs> there's still unrest. There's still upheaval. And that's going to be true 
kind of for a long time but there's nothing that's like it we got to the breath that we were holding we get to exhale it it's a pause most people are not comfortable with the pause most people go bing 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 what's the next thing how do i get out of this i need to i need to not stop i need to go 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 most people are addicted to busy so when there's a pause energetically it feels foreign so we're so so people in general are waiting for the shoe to drop because they're like something's wrong it's too quiet what's going to happen yeah it's not it is. really it's what's going on but it's unnerving for a lot of people who aren't comfortable with the pause yeah that, I, I get that i get that it's like when um it's like when you study for an exam <laughs> this is like my ultimate my ultimate example you you've studied you've, you've had studied for many exams you've got plenty of letters after your name um you study and you study and you study and you're kind of stressed out about it and then the, you take the exam and then the exam is over and you're still like wired yeah what am i there's something i'm supposed to be doing yeah. i don't know what it is but it's something and it's urgent and i better figure it out <laughs> right exactly 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 so that's kind of the energy that where we are for the beginning of april the end of april it gets a little bit more hairy and and you know what my guides have said to me is that you, you we're going to be called we're going to be called to lead in, in you know light workers and healers are being tapped and 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 we're being called we're going to go when we're called so we have to be able to hear the call which means you have to clear your shit out in order to be able to hear the call to go when you're called back back to clearing back your to clear out. shit out it <laughs> always comes back to that jen <laughs> it literally to, never doesn't come back to that back to clearing your shit out so how do people how do how do you suggest people clear their shit out i suggest they do they find a healer or a coach or someone who can help them do shadow work because that's what's up it really is up for everybody to be healed right now really mm -hmm. truly honestly pluto and aquarius is pluto is the shadow pluto is the god of the underworld it's the unseen it's the shadow it's the underneath and it's gonna shine a light in aquarius it's gonna shine a light on the underneath the unseen the unconscious that's Aquarius is watery too well Aquarius is air actually air it's a water bearer it's, like it's an air sign <laughs> it doesn't matter it's an air sign it's a long people are like it's a water sign no it's not it's an air sign but it doesn't okay. matter but it's the revolutionary it's the one that says there's a better way it's the one that says this doesn't work let's fix it, it the, the Aries and Aquarius is a visionary I mean, Aquarius energy is a visionary energy. It's mm -hmm. revolutionary. It's change. It's rebellion. It's it's no longer the status quo doesn't work. It's like it's like the, mm. it's a real change because air, the winds of change, right? That there's mm -hmm. an expression for that. The Aquarius is the epitome of the winds of change. That's the energy that Aquarius brings. So you've got now the shadow coming up to be healed, and the and the Aquarius energy saying we got to fix this. <sighs> Clear the slate. Clear the slate. So the last time this happened was in 1787 when we had the French and American Revolution in the, in like 1770s, 1780s. That's when the last time Pluto was in Aquarius. Oh, great. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, so there's stuff oh. coming. Right? <laughs> Buckle your seatbelts. It's coming. <laughs> okay. So we've got some, we've got some shit about to hit the fan. Right. So and our just, we are waiting for the other shoe to drop. It's not the shoe to drop, but we are waiting to be called. Okay. Because we are the ones we've been waiting for. My guides tell me this. They've been telling me this for years and years and years. But like they just this re this recently, they're like you're the ones we've been, we're the ones we've been waiting for. It's time they they welcomed me into their circle. It's really kind of a cool thing that I got to do this week, this month. Um, they welcomed me into their circle. They were like, we're now the guardians of the sacred flame. It, it's yours. You're you're the guardians. You're the ones that you're the ones who are meant to do this. And I was like, okay, you're sweet breath. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Okay, well, that's cool. Can we talk about that for a second? How much time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, this is deep, 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 deep esoteric stuff. I mean, this is the stuff that I talk about in my membership site and stuff, but yeah. Okay, uh, well, then. I don't care. Okay. No, no. I mean, yeah. All right. So, what does that mean? <laughs> what, does it, what does it mean to be the guardians of the sacred flame? Yeah. Well, what I interpreted it as is there, I mean, I, I talk about we all have a light inside of us we're all this we're all this divine spark mm -hmm. every single one of us is that is the spark of life and 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 so i think of the guardians of the sacred flame as we need to cultivate our spark and and really honor it and really gar be a guardian of it because it because again what happens to one of us happens to all of us it's all part of the collective so so if i'm tending my flame 
it's it's brighter and that so my flame then can light your flame and it can light kelly's flame and jen's flame sarah's flame right so so it's like that then your flames light amy's flame and your parents fight whatever so so if we're the if we're the guardians of the sacred flame our job is to tend it and guard it and like really um cultivate it so again raising our vibrations absolutely and coming into alignment with our our soul's destiny like our soul has a mission our soul has a mission on the planet every single person alive has a mission whether or not they choose to carry it out or even acknowledge it or recognize it but every single person on the planet has a mission they have a divine mission that only they can carry out and they just gotta do it which is really to be unapologetically themselves and most of us don't know how to do that so if someone were thinking okay well what then what the hell's my divine mission it's it's just to be unapologetically unapologetically yourself yeah like that's really truly to grow become and be as often as possible and as fiercely as possible you and not the you that they think that you should be and not the you that they told you you're supposed to be or not the you that like is successful or not successful or whatever the story is that you tell yourself but inside of you there's a spark there's a light there's a there's a knowing that you have some spiritual marching orders to do in this world and that's what everybody's being called to right now because we need people to be doing their light they're doing their work which means we need to, in order to shine the shine the light we need to clear out our junk Good. well because if you're if your glass is dirty yeah you can't the light's not going to shine right yeah no i mean totally it makes it makes a lot of sense for back to me um <laughs> <laughs> but enough about me what do you think of me <laughs> <laughs> so um no i'm trying to clear all this and i'm really kind of become that there's been layers of all this all these energy that I'm trying to that's not mine that I'm I've been working on pulling out of myself and letting go um and what I've I'm kind of left with now because there always is always one more layer <laughs> oh yeah um, there's always one more layer Jen I've been doing this work for 26 years there's always one more layer you know but there's oh. it's that's a different story um <laughs> but so the, I'm just I'm just trying to pull this basically this gunk out of my energetic being but i the funny thing is like at this point it's i've pulled enough out that it's like i reach for it and it's like no i'm going over here <laughs> you know what i mean like it's like, yeah. like it's like following it around but try i really do have the sense that of if i can get this out things will flow better <laughs> yeah I think that's I think that's true and I love that you're doing it so so literally um it's very literal for me <laughs> I, it is very literal because you're a very literal thinker right like it, it's how you operate yes Jen you are a very I am incredibly person. symbolic in my thinking <laughs> <laughs> and that symbolic thinking is very literal <laughs> Well, look, all I can say is I can feel <laughs> this energy stuff and I tell good stories. So absolutely. So so what I want you to sort of get in in, but like every single time you get frustrated by what is every single time you give your power away to some situation that you're the victim of every single time that you're like, this shouldn't be happening. I'm never a victim of a situation and everything should be happening. <laughs> perfect then you don't have to clear out any other gunk but there's gunk still there but regardless this is the feeling that i'm i i want the world to clear out its gunk and Same. i don't know if i'm gonna do it because like i can physically feel like i can physically feel the gunk <laughs> that i so, apparently most people can't so maybe you start asking how old it is and is it ready to heal like you can start having rather than go to battle with it because you go to battle with it, it's going to fight back right so if it's up it's ready to heal if it's ready to heal you get to it's it's an old pattern it's an old energy it's not current if you're telling me currently you don't live in victim you completely understand that the world is exactly the way it should be and you're not giving your power away then that's an old belief that's an old pattern set so you can go backwards and say how old is this pattern and it might say 15 it might say 27 it might say 32 whatever you sit with that part of you and ask what that part of you feels needs thinks believes and ask her 
what you can do to help that part of you release it because it's not yours it's hers let's come back to this at a different at a different time okay <laughs> It depends because there, there are some things that I need to say, um, but let's talk about how people in the world can um, become more aware of their, of their gunk. Well, I mean, how do you become more aware? I, how do we, how do, right? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you how to do that. I, like it's just I something everybody has to be ready for. You can't make someone be aware. No, I don't. That's just it. You can't force anything, right? So if someone's watching this and they're like, I don't, what's my gunk? Automatically, <laughs> you're aware of it. Automatically, right. it's there. It's just asking the question and being like, if you ask the question, what do I have to heal? Or what's next? Or what's here? You'll get the answer. So it's just a matter of sitting in curiosity with the question. I think, too, like you're saying, it's also. I think it comes back to be the being the bearer of the sacred flame, right? I mean, yeah. you shine brightly, you lift your vibrations, the people around you get lifted. I, I personally have experienced that um, recently with someone who I didn't, I was not aware of how unaware they were until they showed me that they weren't by becoming more aware. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I think that's how, how like I mean going back to the very beginning what we're talking about that's how we can help right right is by is by being as aware and conscious as we can and raising the vibrations so that others see that and can reflect on themselves right I, I mean it, you can ask, it, it, it starts with a simple question is like what is this here for? what is how is this best how, what is this here for me what is this what is this how is this for me what am I here to learn from this if you ask that question, that opens the door. That simple question is enough to open the door and raise your awareness. And so like, if someone is in your world and they see that you're having this, 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 you're raising your vibration on some level, they're going to resonate with it. And so they can either get afraid of it and, and either judge it and run away from it or shut it down or 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 back off and be like no no i don't want what she has but if someone who's it's like if someone who's curious about it is like huh i'm interested in that that so that for them what's how what am i here to learn from this what's mm -hmm. here for me that's right. how you start to raise the question it's how you start to understand there's more consciousness than maybe what you've previously thought is possible cool <laughs> right all right <laughs> does that make sense or was no, that no, it's, it's just kind of like a punto period done like right. and mic drop exactly <laughs> kind of what else do we say after that <laughs> it's kind of it <laughs> yeah um so i think it's interesting to to kind of be aware of all of this and how it is influenced by the astrological happenings i think so i think it's easy to use the astrological shifts as reference points mm -hmm. because whether or not you believe in astrology sorry i can't i can't answer it and it's just going to keep ringing what is it can you hear my phone it's, it's no. my parents phone no oh thank god okay go ahead i don't hear it at all <laughs> <laughs> fabulous it was real loud it's definitely not that loud over here okay um, so so whether or not you believe in astrology planetary energies have effects in like we're all part of the cosmos so planetary shifts have vibrational effects so as things as planets move as they shift as things and we do it in terms of obviously from a reference point of the earth because we're on earth but we could take we could completely take ourselves out of it and it's just affect all the other planets are affecting all the other planets because it's planetary shifts it's like tectonic plates things are moving so something like saturn which is the biggest planet in the solar system moving into a different energy field is a big deal whether or not you believe in astrology it just makes it easier to understand the energetic shifts in terms of astrology because it gives us a reference point 
but I could talk to you about the energetic shifts without talking about Saturn and Pisces and Pluto and Aquarius and Aries right. and all the right. other stuff. I just, that's my language because that's, it's a reference point for me that I understand. I've studied astrology since I was a kid. Sorry. Yo, oh, yeah. Astrology has been fascinating for me too. Um, Jupiter's smaller than Saturn. No, Jupiter's bigger than Jupiter's just larger than Saturn. Right <laughs> Thank for you. Our, for our unbelievers out there. Thank you. Like, You're right. Everything she says is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Jupiter is the largest planet. It's not Saturn. I take it back. But it's, it's like second biggest. And that's yeah, pretty yeah. big. <laughs> But yeah, no, I mean, it's interesting to think if you are ready, even if you're not into astrology and you're like, oh, that's silly or whatever, you don't think the planetary bodies have um, any sort of influence on us. It's if you're ready to admit that everything on the, in the universe is energy. And has a grand design. And has a grand design. Both those things kind of mess with your brain (laughs) (laughs) and with everything else. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting because matter is just really concentrated, reformed energy. So if you've got something as huge as Saturn, that's all this matter, of course it's going to be dragging around. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like you don't need to- physics tells you that. <laughs> that's, the- that's the crazy thing about the woo-woo stuff. Right. Uh, there's a mathematician his name is robert edward grant and he blows my mind on the regular basis and most of his i can't even follow it is beyond even my scope my, it's beyond my can a lot of what he talks about and he talks about math like a spiritual math he's a he calls himself a, it's, he's a polymath i don't even know what that is but he talks about the the grand specific like he can like he can n- navigate everything down to like this golden ratio of numbers and it, it's it's again it's beyond my scope so it's not my sphere it's not my reference point but he can mathematically show you how the universe is a grand design he can actually mathematically show it to you that and he'll show you how the height of the that. pyramids <laughs> the height of the pyramids is the same as the height of the the, the ratio from the crust of the earth to the center of there like there's a lot there that you i can't i can't replicate because i don't understand it but if you follow him like patty loves him like <laughs> he like he was he did this thing where he tuned a piano to this to 432 hertz which is the absolute most divine number of hertz you can be attuned to and it was a spiritual i don't know again robert edward grant follow him so if you don't want to follow astrology do it from a math standpoint because math is math <laughs> it comes down to it's the same thing and like, <laughs> right exactly <laughs> exactly Exactly. Yeah, or crazy. physics. Follow modern physics. Follow quantum physicists. Look at look at the work of Tesla and Einstein. Einstein's, yeah. 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 It's just, it's all, it's all one, guys. It's all exactly. one. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Exactly. You need to, you need to, to skedat. I know that. Yeah. Um, thank you everybody for tuning in on a really weird time for us to be doing on tethered talk i know it's i my schedule is weird and we haven't well been and i screwed up last, last last friday or i don't remember things just are all crazy right now life is life is in flux jen and that's and you know what? And if okay it, if it, it just was not meant to happen last week exactly it happened now because it's meant to happen now exactly and that's dictated by the planet <laughs> <laughs> Or it's dictated by some math. All right. Okay. Well, thank you very, very much, Robin, as always. Um, So there won't be an untethered talk on Friday this week. There'll be something next week. Probably. Yeah. I think we're off schedule for next Friday, right? Awesome. 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 All right. I'll let you go then. Thank you, everybody out there. Be grateful. Be happy. And that's it, really. Bye. Bye.